you? It's not, you have no life outside of your kids. Well, my wife is an architect. We made a decision that's best for me to take care of kids. It's called a system which works. Yeah, a prison system. That's what it sounds like. What's that, Mark? Honey, baby! My birthday's coming. You haven't been to one of my parties for forever. I want you, you all to so welcome Miss Chesman Figaro to the stage. The sister who dots the eye across the teeth for her government name. So many of us who are old enough um, have longer memories. So when we see this important documentary that we've seen today in the work of attorney Ben Crump, um, we have seen um, such a giant before. Um, his name is Johnny Cochran. Uh, and so in now in 2022, uh, attorney Crump, you are you know, this generation's Johnny Cochran. Um, and so we want you to continue to um, do the work that you're doing um, and, and fight the cases that you're fighting. So I'll let you know. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Before we, before we start, there's one man in this room. He's the longest tenured member of the Georgia General Assembly. He is the ambassador designate for, for the Bahamas. He happens to be a fraternity brother of Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Er Mayor of 
Charlottesville when those fools went to his city and he stood up to make a difference. So I wanted to make sure we did that. So Ben, we're gonna have a little little conversation. You're gonna mix up Ben and I'll ask some questions, but again, we'll let you come with some questions at the end. But Ben, let's go ahead. Phenomenal. Let's give it up for again this phenomenal document. Thank you. And, and Nadia Harvard, the uh, award-winning director who also directed Michelle Obama's Become and directed Netflix Civil. And uh, she is uh, seven months pregnant and had every intention on being here, but the doctor told her she couldn't travel. But she's here in spirit, so I want to say, y'all yeah, give it up for this young black director, Nadia Harvard. And Tommy, I, I get right into it. Uh, I, I just want to first have Tesla talk about when we were in Virginia, what motivated her to break it down like she did, and then have uh, Melanie uh, respond why that was so important that we speak truth to power. Y'all give it up for Tez. She dot the I and crossed the T. say this, um, and I, I told Attorney Crump this just the other day, it is really important to me that he hears the words that I say about him and that he receives this love, not when we're standing over him. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Uh, I, I said, I have to have an opportunity to speak about you and your leadership uh, where he can hear it and, and receive it. And so that particular night, it, it was truly unscripted. Most times when uh, we're on the stage together, I don't say anything. I'm sitting in the back and Ben say, you want to say something? And I say, no, I don't want to say nothing. And then when something, then I say, Ben, I want to say something. <laughs> it is, I, you should have said something. And um, that particular uh, evening, it was so important to me uh, that I was able to speak to the things that you guys did not see in the documentary. Attorney Crump is the most even killed not frustrated, calm, collected, passionate, pastor, deacon, friend, brother. I've never seen him frustrated, and I don't use ab terms, absolute terms, but I can say that I've never seen this man frustrated. I've never seen him upset. I've never seen him not encouraged. And the things that the movie didn't show you on what he actually goes through behind the scenes on having to deal with all of these different components of family having to deal with grief and families having to go through extreme trauma and also having to deal with even the negative naysayers from in our own community. That's important that we recognize that, that it is not just white supremacy that attacks Attorney Crump. It is also even sometimes from internal, those who are closest to us, I wish I had at least one witness in here. That maybe I'm the only one that don't. Maybe I'm the only one that don't that, that, that get that. So it was. I wasn't just talking to the people in the audience. I was also talking to the people that was behind me, that also may have questioned why Attorney Crump has been called for this mission. And so when I hear people, I call them the social media comment caucus. Uh, they always got something to say. You know, why do they call Attorney Crump? And, why do these families call him and why is he first on the scene? So I thought it was important to put the challenge out there to ask, why is it that nobody's calling your leaders? Mm. Somebody should want to know why Pastor Brian is the only one, the only minister that we hear really saying something. I, I know uh, there's somebody here that understand what I'm talking about. And I don't want to say only, meaning that there's not other people that are doing things, but it, it's, it's something to be said about somebody that's willing to go out on the front line and take everything that comes with uh, calling for justice. And so I, I won't go long because he put a, he pulled a mic up. That's my cue, y'all, to wrap it up. But I, I just thought it was so important that people heard uh, authentically uh, what, what the challenges that Attorney Crumps deal with and to also challenge your elected officials at home, your ministers at home, your leaders at home on why is it these families skip over all of them to call somebody from the outside. And, and that was what I wanted people to think about. 
Thank you, Tess. If y'all know Tess and Figaro, she always keep it real. I mean, and don't think that she always tell me good stuff. She tell me, you shouldn't have said that. I mean, she she really speaks her mind. And before Melanie Campbell, my homegirl from uh, Florida, uh, talks, I, I do want to give uh, flowers to Jamal Bryant because I remember Trayvon Martin. Jamal came down here, he was one of the first people to speak up on Trayvon. So, Jamal, you know, I'll never forget you, brother. I love you. And, and Miss Melanie Campbell, you know, when I think about Breonna Taylor, and it was so interesting. You kind of remember the defeats more than you ever remember the victories. And one of the things I always remember when I watched the documentary was when, uh, the Kentucky Attorney General had that sham grand jury and said that they were not going to bring charges against the police officers for mutilating this young black woman's body with eight bullets. And uh, the one thing I remember, Tez, and, and sick, I think I told you and Cliff this, when my mother, who we talk almost every day, she said, my Lord, no justice for Brianna. Kentucky gonna burn. And, uh, you know, I try to say, well, I hope they don't do that, mama, because that wouldn't advance us in any way. But it was that lack of black women getting mm -hmm. justice. And as I mm -hmm. think about Brianna Grill's family, mm -hmm. it is so hard for black women to get justice in America. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. before Melanie responds, you know, Ted, I was texting you when it was coming down in Kentucky. Uh, Christian Clark, you know, say what you want to say, but she did not shy away. She kept working on Breonna Taylor, and she put her name on the line to say, we're going to bring charges against these police officers. And it was the first time in history that police officers been charged for killing a black woman on the federal level. And I say all that to say, Melanie, can you talk to the challenges of how black women are often marginalized even more than black men. Yeah. 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 You said it. <laughs> but first, first, you know, you know how you know somebody and then you find out you really didn't know all. Mm. And we, we got we got some home folks that we know, little church down there in Memphis, Florida. And uh, just to watch, and as I just have to say to you, my brother Ben, thank you. Thank you. Can I hear y'all say thank you? Thank you. Thank you. Because we all, you know, you know, we fight these fights, you know, Jamal, you know, and you do what you have to do, and you guys using you for such a time as this. So as a black, as a sister in this movement, I thank you just as a sister, period, I thank you. And I know, as you said, you think you're running out of time. No, God got much, much more, because there's so much injustice. I was sitting there with my sister, Deborah Scott, and we were saying, I said, this, you're not cuss. <laughs> this country, it has a lot of broken pieces to it. And what you're doing is putting some of those pieces back together for our people. So you make it so they see us. Because a lot of it is they don't see us. So therefore, we're the, we're the humanity in us is not seen. And the things that I can see in that, I think that any, we need to show this everywhere that we can so that folks will understand why it's so important yes. to do this work. In this moment that we're in, this was important for this to come out now so that we know that we're gonna have to keep fighting the fight. And so I just, I, I have a lot of emotions right now watching that and knowing, and knowing when you brought Breonna Taylor's mother to DC over in the NCNW building and with, with Tamika mm -hmm. and, and knowing that there are sisters like Tamika, that you make sure that you hold them up 
And it's nothing against brothers. Absolutely. We but hold up the sisters that's putting their lives on the line. I will thank you for that. Because that does not always happen. I want to thank my chairman here who supports me and all my craziness, Carol, right? And, 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 do a, and that's what it takes. It's going to take all of us. And this election, and the way where I'm sitting here and not talk about how important it is. When you talk about um, um, Elder Kristen, Kristen Clark, who's taken some hits, right? Oh, yeah. But she, yes. that girl is working. We, and it elects young people that are in here. Don't let them fool you. This election does matter. It will matter whether or not we can have a Chris, uh, Christian Clark in that Justice Department in the next four years from now, or somebody like her, so that we can continue to get justice. So for me, I just want to say thank you again. We're going to keep fighting the fight, and, and I'm, I'm going to stay in the foxhole with you with the cameras on and the cameras off and being able to see behind the camera to see what you go through. People think it's, 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 it's sexy to be on a plane every five minutes. I hope y'all caught some of those stories. Uh, that it, it's not that easy. No. Ben, I have a question for Slim. All right, right. coming to Slim. Right. Yeah. Because, I mean, just like Johnny was, Johnny Cochran, who was a member of the 100, like you are, he was always successful. Slim, I know it's a challenge because Ben, 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 of course, being a, um, a friend for years and attorney's brother and all that good stuff, he likes to press the flesh with people. He believes in people. But I know the challenge for you has got to be really great because of all of what he's done around this nation, an iconic person. There's too many fools out here who would love to just take him out. Tell us a little bit about your work, and I know you lose a lot of sleep, but give us a little bit about how you keep my brother straight sometime when you gotta, you gotta be the big brother and the daddy to him to make him do right. Yeah, that's a that's a rough job. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> believe me, it's not it's not about Slim. It's about us because we are a team, and we have figured out one thing together. Each accomplishes more. Mm -hmm. And we work as a team daily to make sure that his safety is there. That's me, that's Chris, and that's Cliff and Kareem. All of us work together. But for me and Kareem, um, Ben is an easy task for us because we also guard one of the most strongest black men on the planet, and that's Minister Louis Farrakhan. So if we could protect Minister yeah. Farrakhan, we could damn sure take care of him. <laughs> And I also wanted to speak about one thing, you know, in the movie you hear Ben say he feels like he's running out of time, that nightmare keep occurring, and every time he had that nightmare, I wake him up because I know we got a whole bunch of more blood to kill. Yeah. And we understood because I went to the prison at 16 years old, and I did time all of my life, but when God put me back on the streets, he didn't put me out here to lose my life, he put me out here to save lives of others. So we take that very serious. And you know, we got people out there, don't get us wrong. We know we got threats. And at the end of the day, we're willing to die for him, but we're also willing to kill for him, and that's what it takes for the people yeah. alive. Yeah. We believe, yeah, like Ted said, we believe, we believe. We believe in lift every voice and sing, but we ain't as afraid to put up every fist and swing if that's what it takes. I like that. I love it. I love it. Ben. Man, you, you, you're everywhere. You do so much for so many, and you never ask for a penny. Uh, you've been out there on the front line for our people, not just in the courtroom, but when we call on you, and there's so many calling on you, 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 you don't have the what do you uh, expect, or what do you want from this documentary, the message you want with the young people and the students and, and everybody that's in here uh, from your way? What do you want from this documentary? And it's only two years of, it's not, it's just two years of your life, not yeah. and, and the heavy work that you do, but share, share with us your thoughts. No, no Tommy, as I, I look at, um, the great lawyers out there, we're all in this together. Uh, Gerald Griggs, uh, my co-counsel on Brianna's case, uh, LaShonda, Counsel Rogers, where all the black lawyers who in the world stand? Because we're all in this together. we all in this together, y'all. 
when we precious, I mean, when one of us is good, it raises all of us up. And I always remember that the three things that I, I think people should take away from the documentary is number one, and, and Tez remind me this every day, right? <laughs> she, she says, hey, it's about making it financially unsustainable mm -hmm. for them to keep killing black people unjustly. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the one things I want them, everybody to take away. We are fighting to raise the value of black life in America. And so, Tommy, you know, like you do with 100 black men, we're trying to over and over again let our black children know that they matter, that they are valued, they're not inferior, they're not insignificant, they're not irrelevant, and they're not invisible. We love our children just as much as they love their children. And so that's the first thing, value. The second thing, and I keep going back to Ted, because Ted texts me throughout the day, even when I don't ask for advice at times. <laughs> uh, but Melanie, it, it, it is what I told Ted Koppel, and you know, it was that was an interesting interview, but you know. We have to be unapologetic defenders mm -hmm. of black life, black liberty, and black humanity. Yeah. We can never have our children wonder whether we believe in them or not. Our actions gotta show it every day. We gotta be willing to speak up for our children, stand up for our children, and fight for our children. I mean, we have to be willing to die for our children. We gotta fight until hell freezes over, Cameron Smyre. And then, we gotta be ready to fight on the ice for our children. Our children gotta know that's how much we believe in them, and that's what we're fighting for. That's what we're fighting for. And then the last thing, the third and final thing, Tommy, Deutsch, who's a, a great mentor of mine, <laughs> it's what I said to Jamal Kaplan. He might not understand this. <laughs> <laughs> don't hate, don't have that faith, Dr. Bryan. Don't hate so, it. Don't hate <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, so, Denise Benjamin, it's, it's what I said as a young member of Omega Sci Fi. Lead me, follow me, or get the hell out of my way. That's what I wanted to take. Uh, and, and, and folks, while you hear us joke about fraternities and sororities, at the end of the day, we're all brothers and sisters trying to work hand in hand, work together, and we and we do that. Let me ask the students that are just staying. Let just, those students are still in here with us from the. Uh, just stand. Just stand. Our future. Our future. And let, let me let me say to you because Melanie and all of my mentees when I was associate director of the Democratic Party of Georgia I came into the center and I recruited Melanie and all of them they haven't stopped and Melanie still gets on me she said I could have been making tons of money but you got me into this but what we all have to understand there were so many great leaders who came from here throughout this country. Remember, SNCC started in Atlanta University Center, the late Julian Bond and, and John, John Lewis while he was at Knoxville College and Lonnie King and even, even Dr. King. All of them came from the Atlanta University Center. But the reality is the Freedom Riders came from the historical black colleges and universities throughout this country. And when you heard um, earlier, when Stacy spoke, you heard Ben We've got to get away from sitting in, in these groups and talking about what should have been. We would not have had Raphael Warnock as our U.S. Senator had it not been for the students in this center, had it not been for collective groups coming together across the state, the NAACP, um, you had Urban League, you had the Divine Nine, you had the 100 black men. You had so many groups that came together, and we turned out like never before. With these elections coming this fall, we can't sit and talk about what didn't happen in the governor's office, what didn't happen 
from the insurrection at the White House, and, I mean, at the Capitol, it's up to us. Over mm. half a million black people mm. have been registered in this state and not voting. We got that turnout. Mm. But folks, you cannot be relaxed now. There are folks who were complaining, being well, the president didn't do uh, the forgiveness. We have the forgiveness now coming on student loans. It's a start. Mm. But it's amazing how people have gotten four years of that fool we call President Donald Trump for four years and expect this new president to clean up in less than, in almost two years, the mess he created that four years before him, President Obama cleaned up the mess he inherited. And so I, I say that it's the power in this room and what you've proven. You have not slept. We know you're tired the phenomenal panel here. So I just wanted to say that, is that it's what we we have to do, and do it in memory of Dr. C.T. Vivian, yeah. we lost. Yeah. Yeah. John Lewis yeah. that we lost yeah. last year. Yeah. Hank Aaron we lost yeah. last year. Yeah. Reverend Joseph yeah. Lowry, yeah. and the list goes on. So I just want to make sure again, and I'll pass it back to you, is that people understand the power we have. The late Maynard Jackson said, yeah. it's the buck the ballot the and the books book. on how we're gonna get ahead. And we need to use that because at the end of the day, folks, they wanna take away and we can't give it to them. We've gotta fight every day mm -hmm. for what we've gained and what they wanna take away. And in this country, and I hate to say it, no, I don't. White men are so afraid of losing that they're doing everything now to try and stay in power it's unfortunate that our white sisters have not stood up, mm -hmm. but our black sisters have been right on the front line. So back to you, Ben. Thank you, Tommy. And y'all, they telling me we might have to, we got time for just two more uh, questions. Any questions from the audience, right? Huh? Go ahead, two more questions, and from the audience, real quick. Well, and, and Tommy, you, you gonna get with the president and make sure we don't get held in contempt of court? You got that right. Okay. All uh, right, so. Uh, Tommy, Tommy, you're fine. Okay, you're fine. Hey, okay. Being, being a trustee, there are some privileges, but having, having a great president like, like, like Dr. French, this is what is just the beginning of what will happen on a regular basis. But what I do want to do so while you're let, doing it. Let me do this and you can get the students. And the students I, want I, to come I, up I, now. I want to ask for a point of person privilege because I yes. think we need to hear from him. He ain't on the panel, but that's my man, and nobody can bring that word like him, uh, and that's Reverend Jamal Bryant. Oh, but yes. before we go to Jamal, I want to ask Tez, and then Tommy, we'll let the students do it. Because so many times you uh, talk about what the people in our community, the, the people who didn't get the opportunity to come to college, and they the regular early bus people who work at five in the morning to clean other people's houses and take care of other mm -hmm. people's children and factories. What, Civil Two, the sequel, if there was a Civil Two, tell the people what you think should be covered in it because Terrence really is brilliant, y'all, and she gives me a lot of good. She's the truth, she's the truth. <laughs> So, Taz and then Jamal, get ready, man, because we got to hear from you. Yeah, I, I just, especially to the to the youth, it is really important, and I, I have, I, it would be remiss for me not to say this, that we also talk about the policies that have come out of these cases. Uh, at the end of the film, you got a chance to see the financial settlement, but I always talk about with Attorney Crump, how we always have to make sure that people know that actual policy came out of this as well. You have what I say, the paper, getting the money, and then you have the punishment, the criminal punishment that you saw, but also the policy that is what's most important on when we look at the Andre Hill uh, law, when we look at Breonna Taylor's law that was passed, when we look at all of the 100 plus cities that have now passed some level of police reform. And I have to say this, because if I didn't say this, I wouldn't be Tesla Figaro. It is important that you vote yes, but it is also more important that you vote for the right folks. Mm -hmm. And if the right people are not representing you, and that means black folks included, it is time to not chase them, but replace them. And I cannot just be a part of, well, you know, we gotta, no, no, no. 
We have to make sure that the right people are in place. Next week, if you don't mind me saying, Attorney Crump, September 10th, we have organized over 300 people that are coming together to learn how to be candidates, mm. to learn how to be Good. operatives on campaigns, and to also learn how to organize. If you're interested, text push the line, all one word, push the line, politics until something happens. Mm. Push the line to 66866. Because what I'm finding out in the streets, where Silky and I come from, maybe some of y'all don't, I don't know, but in the streets, they are looking for, we are looking for a chance to be active, a chance to be motivated, a chance to get involved, and just saying we gotta do it because the ancestors said do it, is not motivating our youth enough. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to give them the mic, allow an opportunity to lead, even if they don't lead the way you want them to lead, mm -hmm. even if it's not comfortable for you, even if they saying something that may be way off base, how do we take this generation to the next level? Mm -hmm. And just like we said, the, uh, when you talked about the ballot, I'ma talk about the Malcolm X, the ballot of the book. And he said it's time to stop singing and time to get some swinging going on. And that means to actually hold these elected officials accountable. And you have every right to ask and demand that they do exactly what they said they was gonna do. I'm nonpartisan, I'm independent, I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, whoever you are, what are you doing for black people? And if people are not asking that question and demanding answers, then we are doing a disservice. And that's why our youth are not involved as they should be. Because we come from the generation of NWA. I'm the descendants of NWA, the descendants of hip hop. We want some answers. And it's not just gonna be no singing. And that's respect, and I don't say that in respect, but that's what Civil Two needs to be about. To see what are we doing behind the scenes to hold elected officials accountable to get the policy so that we don't have to see an, another Breonna Taylor. That's right. Good, good point, Tess. What, you, Tess, what you, you just dealt with, what the late Mayor Jackson said is, we need to get rid of all these scared Negroes in office. <laughs> well, get some people who are gonna stand up and have the courage. We, 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 we have a, Fani is doing a phenomenal job as our uh, district attorney. She's taking on and gonna prosecute that, that guy y'all call Trump. Yeah. She's moving. Our sister in New York right. doing her thing. Melanie and everybody were engaged to make sure we got our first sister on the Supreme Court. Yeah. And and so but we all have to do do our piece, but you but you're right on. And and one thing I want to give kudos to the students from CAU who led the march when all the demonstrations were going on and they were having infiltration and the violence, our students and the AU Center got together, marched from here, down to the courthouse and back, and not one incident, because we had our students leading, and we didn't have folks trying to come in. They would not allow anybody to get in the middle of their march for justice in this city, and so that's what we call real leadership, and that's, again, when you look at the leadership at our campuses on HBCUs and all, and not just HBCUs, but our campus has been the students have got to lead because that's going to be how we're going to be successful in this nation. Jez Deutsch, I asked for <laughs> <laughs> an exception to our standard protocol. I, I, I know so much of what the black lawyers do in the courtroom. We have our faith leaders who have to also be in lockstep as well. And uh, I, I just never forget, he, I, he tell me I don't supposed to say this, but when we were going around with Trayvon Martin 10 years ago, Gerald, and I mean, we had all these speakers. Trayvon really was a phenomenon. Oh, yes. And it became pretty obvious quickly, Denise, the Negro who had to speak last was Jamal right. Bryant because nobody could follow him. So y'all give it up for Reverend Jamal Bryant. Tell us, Thank you. Tell us what you think about the doc and what you think the role of faith and uh, spiritual faith. I think about Breonna Greer mm -hmm. having faith that we're going to get justice in a place called Hancock, Georgia. And so, if you could speak to that, yes. Jamal. Yes, uh, first, let me thank my boss and my chairman, uh, Mr. Dorch, uh, for this privilege. I want to uh, really extend high commendation to uh, Attorney Crump. Uh, because this is the very first generation where you can become a celebrity and not have talent. Uh, and, uh, I, uh, and what it is, I, I mean that seriously, that what it is that uh, uh, Attorney Crump has been able to do is really 
a model for us that your integrity is more important than your image. Mm. Uh, that what he has done is really push forward how our accountability matters. Mm. And I watch uh, from a different lens, uh, Mr. Dorch, uh, that uh, he was uh, premeditated in what it is that he said, uh, that in 10 years, he's not had to clean up a statement. Mm. Uh, and I, I wish I could be that. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just grateful for, for that kind of model. Uh, it is uh, very important for us uh, that we saw that. Uh, I was sitting beside uh, Brother Bellamy, uh, that we could have really watched that film in black and white footage uh, and not know what year we were in. Uh, and it, it, it was heart wrenching for all of us. Wes said he needed a drink. Uh, and I, I said, I'm just going to extend prayer. That, that's all I said, <laughs> that I was going to drive them. But uh, <laughs> uh, it, it really was a sobering reality that we really have not come that far. Uh, it really has uh, ignited us that we've got a whole lot uh, further to go. We thought, uh, Attorney Crump, that when we got to uh, Trayvon, that was the pinnacle. Yeah. Uh, we, we had no idea that George Floyd was coming. Uh, and that Breonna Taylor uh, was coming. It was so significant and so valuable for us. And so I, uh, like uh, my dear sister, I uh, want to say that the amazing and uncanny thing about black people uh, is that we don't uh, really celebrate our leaders enough. Uh, when they're alive, we run their name through the street. Yeah. Uh, and after they die, yeah. we name the street after them. Uh, but I, I wanted us Bar. to really celebrate uh, Attorney Crump to uh, let him know as a living legacy uh, that uh, we really admire him. The faith component is so necessary. And I want to say this uh, on record. We lived in a day and in an hour that the black preacher was always at the forefront. Uh, and I've lived long enough, uh, Chairman Dorch, to see a transition uh, for the scholars who are here are from Clark Atlanta University. Uh, asterisk has to be noted that Black Lives Matter was the very first civil rights movement that was not led by a preacher. Uh, secondly, significantly, that it was not birthed out of the church. Uh, and so it's very important that faith leaders know how to support when they don't leave. Right. Uh, and they have to be present when they don't have a microphone. Right. Uh, and so I am glad to stand behind uh, Attorney Crump because a uh, real leadership uh, is understanding that to lead, you don't have to be in charge. Uh, but it is the power of presence. And so thank you for redefining to the black community that to be a leader, you don't have to have reverend in front of your name or doctor in front of your name, whether that's earned or not. Uh, but whether you have reverend or doctor, but to be a civil servant, and you've modeled that for millennials, uh, that the church is not the only place where you find your leadership, uh, but that you can find it on the street corner. So I'm here really just to give the benediction now under him. Thank y'all. Uh, what well, I told you, it's hard. Nobody can't follow Jamal Bryant. Thank you, Jamal, for always speaking truth to power. Uh, I have some students here. We're going to have you come with your questions. Uh, as they say, no dissertations. I know you're practicing students. Just bring on, bring those questions, because it's important to us that we hear from you. So first question. Good evening, everyone. I am Frederica Smith. I'm a junior, and I attend the illustrious Clark Atlanta University. Um, I'm just honored to be here, and thank you all. Um, Mr. Crump, thank you, and thank you, everyone on the panel. My question is, a lot of the times I see a disconnect between the younger generation and the older generation. So what can I do being a part of the younger generation to help the younger generation and the older generation work together um, to be an influence and bring awareness to civil rights? Yes, why don't you and Melanie take that on real quick? Whichever one wants to go first. Well, first of all, I graduated from this place, right? Um, this man uh, recruited me right, uh, to do voter registration for the NAACP. Um, so I think the, the key for you is to lead while you're here, 
right? Really get engaged, which I have a feeling you. I just have in my spirit that you already are, right? Because you, you ain't here, right? right? To hear this message today. So the key is do it now. Don't wait. To, uh, and don't wait to after. Connect with the generation behind. Now they recruited us, and we recruited others. You got young uh, leaders that are coming behind you. And so the, the mentorship goes both ways as well, right? And so the day I forget that I can't learn anything, that's when I need to go sit down. Mm -hmm. And what Gerald talked about is really also, uh, and it becomes sometimes very difficult to do that, but if you just think about, I'm gonna make sure that I'm going to pour, pay it, people say pay it forward, pay it backwards and forward. And connected intergenerational leadership for me is what's important. But for you, you're here, organized while you're here, and you'll take that with you for the rest of your life. I, I went to corporate America. I did that. I hated it, right? And 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 and, and did a lot of other things uh, that I could have made a whole lot more money. But I got my 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 um, uh, passion for my purpose, and I didn't know it then either, right? That. But I got it right here on this campus, so you're in the right place.
Yeah. All right, so so when the feeling hits you, you gotta move on it. That's what you got. Okay. All right, so so here we go. I'm gonna have questions quickly and one minute answers. <laughs> and quick questions so I can get through all the student leaders because I refuse to shut down when you're lined up to ask your questions. So quick question, one minute answer, whoever you direct it to. So here we go. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Deja Johnson. I'm a senior here at Clark Atlanta University. I'm a political science major. Um, my question would be for you, um, Mr. Crump. What is something that you would tell your younger self today? Like some advice you would give your younger self? You know, it was funny. I was sitting there beside Cliff and Ted, and I saw uh, being an all white super cop. That's what we did. We put on all white when we went to the prom. And I said, look at that kid. The, the one thing I would say is don't ever doubt yourself. Don't ever doubt yourself. And, and that, a lot of it is just. Uh, we talk about faith. I believe. I believe in, and Ted's talking about me being optimistic. I just believe in everything in my power that we going to win. I think about the ancestors and what they can't keep them down and what they overcame. We can overcome anything they throw at us, y'all. And that's what I would tell my younger self. Don't you for one minute doubt that you belong because you do belong. Hello everyone, my name is Kaylin Charles. I go to Morehouse College, freshman biology major, French minor from Lafayette, Louisiana. My question was for Mr. Crump. Um, I just wanted to know, what have you learned throughout your career? And also, what advice would you give to someone like me? Uh, throughout my career, I have truly learned it's about team. It's never about you. It's all about we. And if you make your goal to be where everybody wins, then you're going to be the better for it. It's real easy to get caught up in ego and believe in your own news clips. But you have to always say, no, no, no. Everybody played a role in getting George Floyd justice. Everybody played a role in getting Breonna Taylor justice. And you keep trying to give reflective sunshine every chance you get. If anybody ever saw me in a press conference, you know, I'm letting everybody talk. I'm letting everybody know that every lawyer matters on this team because it's always about we, never about I. Hello, everybody. My name is Odin Kano Fagi. I'm a freshman that attends Morehouse College. I'm a pre cinema, television, and emergent media studies major. I have a question for you, Mr. Crump. What advice would you give to students interested in your line of work? In being a civil rights lawyer? Well, you know, <laughs> I think I look over at Silky and Cliff and them because the advice I would give is make sure you understand people. This is a people profession. And uh, I surround myself with people who are smart and intelligent, but most importantly, Denise, you know, who can communicate with people, who can make people feel valued and important. And, and that goes so long when people believe that they matter. A lot of times, Tommy, a lot of times, a lot of black people don't feel valued in America. Mm -hmm. And I mean, think about how many convicted felons we have. They say one out of every five black men. So every chance I get, I always tell them, hey man, we still think you can be a productive citizen in society. We still believe that you're one of the best things your mom and daddy gave to this world. We still believe God got a plan for you. We still believe in you because we have to encourage our people. If we don't do it, ain't nobody else gonna do it. So get around people who, if you're gonna be a civil rights lawyer, you ain't doing it for the money. You're doing it because you want to make a difference for your people. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Malik Jahad Pool. I'm a senior software engineering major, sociology minor from uh, Morehouse College. Um, I'm from Oakland. Um, first off, I want to say 
Hey, Brother Slim, assalamu alaikum. Thank you for your service. Uh, I'm not in the nation, but my father was, and you know, you heard my name is Malik Jihad, so thank you. Um, and of course, thank you to everyone on this panel. Thank you for being here. Thank you to everyone who showed up. Uh, this question, I think I'm gonna direct towards uh, Taj. Um, we mentioned the insurrection several times here. We were talking a lot of times about the threats that have come against Mr. Crump. Unfortunately, I think we have the former mayor of Charlottesville in here. I don't think it's at this point controversial to, uh, I'll get to the question, I'll get to the question. Um, I don't think it's controversial to say that we are seeing both a resurgence and a rise of American fascism in the modern era and that white terrorism is an increasingly large threat. There were several days last year where we had no classes because of bombing threats at Clark and Morehouse and Spelman. What do you think is the role of youth in general or specifically black youth in trying to combat the rise of fascism and all of these threats that we face. So, I'm, I'm gonna let Tez answer that one. You don't want me to answer that one. <laughs> My thing is that, <laughs> you don't want me to answer that, but I'm gonna let Tez answer that. No, go ahead and answer so, Well, I, 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 I honestly believe that um, as a people, we have prayed, we have marched, we have laid in, said in, we just have never fought. And I think until we answer every knock with a knock, it ain't gonna stop. Right. So we got to answer every knock with a knock, but we're not there. So what we can do is really let Black Lives Matter by loving your brothers and stop killing each other and make sure that we come together in unity. And that's gonna, that's gonna rid us of everything else. Once they see us together and once they see that if I was to walk on your feet right now, your feet ain't gonna say it hurt. Your mouth will, because you're connected to a nervous system. Once they see us connected to a system where my brother hurt, I hurt, yes. my brother die, I'm ready to die, then we can stop all the foolishness. But until we reach that point, we're gonna continue to suffer the way that we are. Good evening, uh, Dr. Benjamin Crump. Uh, my name is Ahmad Minnis. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm a theater arts major with a business minor. And my question to you would be, what did you do in college to like balance? Because I know me personally, it's like with being back home and trying to get people registered to vote. Me personally, I just registered, I just voted like back home for an election. So what would you tell people, what would advice you would give to me to, tell, to show me how to like balance life right now? You, you know, really, this is the best time of your life in college. And I know you don't appreciate it, but as you get older, man, you look back on your college days and you said, I didn't have many challenges that I'm gonna have as an adult. So you can really find who you are. You can really say, what is it I like? What am I passionate about? What is it I, I dream about? And so that's what you do to find the balance. You try to, you know, find who you are. And that's the beautiful part of college. Hey, my name is Jaden Ford. I'm a political science major freshman from Ross College. And my question is, what about kind of presenting with Odin's, what advice would you give to someone who wants to become a lawyer? I'm, I'm the pre -like, um, so, uh, say what? Uh, what advice would you give to someone who wants to be a lawyer? I'm on the um, pre law track. Oh, Gerald, advice about somebody who wants to be a lawyer. Go ahead and tell them, Gerald Green. Gerald's a great lawyer here in Atlanta. Take as many anthropology classes, because like, like um, Attorney Crump just said, you gotta know people. You gotta understand how people work. You know, the practice of law is just being able to relate the experience of people to the rules that have been established uh, and codified like the official code of Georgia. So just understanding people, being able to organize people, being able to organize your thoughts and make a rational argument, and knowing how people respond. Yeah, that's it. Be able to inspire confidence in people. Thanks, Gerald Griggs, our Georgia NAACP president. Yeah. Uh, my name is Arthur Alston, better known as Choke No Joke. I'm a producer, director. Um, I don't have a question. I just want to echo off of what Taz was saying because I know Mr. Crump and I worked with him uh, with the Andrew Brown Jr. case that happened in Elizabeth City, uh, North Carolina. I'm the one that called him. Yep. I called my guy, Phil Gates, and because the person I was dealing with at the time, 
her son's father got shot and killed by the police, her uh, two sons. And she just walked in the room was like, they just killed my, my baby's father. And I don't know this guy. And that's her ex. I don't, you know, I don't care. But the fact that the police gunned him down and it was another black man gunned down, I was like, you want me to make a phone call? She was like, yeah. I called my man Phil. He called Crump. We got on the phone with Crump. He didn't ask about this dude's background. He didn't ask anything about him. He just asked about what happened with the case. And when he saw through the conversation that there was some injustice, he jumped on it. And I got cool with him just through Bakari Sellers and everybody else that would dealt with the case, Harry and everybody. But I got cool with him because like Tez was saying, y'all don't see the other side that they didn't show in the documentary. We got everybody that looked like us in there, call him an ambulance chaser. We got him calling him a sellout. We got people, uh, he doing press conference. There's dudes standing there yelling over the press conference, over him talking to the people trying to get justice, and they all look like us. And like this brother said, we're going to protect him by any cost. He'll tell you, I ran down on these dudes and made them shut up. I put my life at risk because they could have did something to me, but I kept dudes off of him. I kept dudes off of Roland Martin so that they can make their point and get justice. And Andrew Brown Jr. was a drug dealer. He, he wasn't no innocent guy to the community. He was a drug dealer. And they still, the police were still wrong in killing him. And that man, regardless of his background, he still came out there and helped him. And his sons got three, $3 million settlement for that. And I seen how they treated them like in, in words at that. Them sheriffs, some people in Elizabeth City, they was nothing but in words to them white people. And they fighting and fighting and fighting. They got justice out of it. And that's Thank great. You. Thank you, Brother Austin. Um, that said balance is going to be 30 seconds. Ben gave you the, the Martin answer. Let me give you the Malcolm answer to the brother talking about balance. Y'all balance everything else. Y'all balance hip hop. You balance Instagram. You balance Snapchat. You balance the club. You balance the women. Our people can't wait on us to move. We, we come from a strong, we strong people. You can balance it. If I can balance my kid and working and doing all this stuff, you can balance it too. So if you can't balance it, your time, the way you think you should accordingly, keep pushing the line. This is gonna require you to push harder than you've ever pushed. And I don't like to give people false, you know, false on how this works. It's gonna require you to be up all night. It's gonna require you to push. It's gonna require you to cry. You are going to have to push the line and be prepared for this type of work. If this is, you wanna get in this type of work, this is servant work. And although Attorney Crump looks nice and standing, it's been times we watch him standing up literally about to pass out from sleep. This man gets no rest at all. So we got the balance and sleep when we did. On earth, they need us now, and we need you in the fight, brother. Very good. Very good. Uh, good evening, my name is Jacob Ryan Pearson. I'm a scholar, sophomore scholar from Fort Valley State University. All right, <laughs> I have a question for you. Um, as a social work major, how can I also get into um, criminal justice major as well? How can that go hand in hand? Uh, because of you, because of uh, Andrew Young and Thurgood Marshall, uh, I just see there's a need in our community for social workers and strong black activists like yourself. And I, I prefer the male I prefer the Tommy Lewis. You criminal justice well, my, major. My undergraduate degree is in sociology and pre-professional social work. My master's from AU, now CAU, is criminal justice administration. And the only reason I didn't take a scholarship to go to Emory Law School was have been in school for six years, have been involved with Ben Brown, John Lewis, all of them got me in, uh, in Bob. So I figured I'd be a poor, broke lawyer because I'd be giving away all my services. So I still give every day. I own six businesses, over 300 employees. And my people ask me, why do you keep working so much for a community? Because if it wasn't for those who went before me, I would not be a successful businessman. I would not be where I am now um, and the things I've done because you have to pay it back, pay it forward. And so the key is, it's about you. Your, your degrees, social workers can make great lawyers. 
Criminal justice will help do some things for you, but as everybody said, you gotta love people, believe in people, and willing to give your time. And for me, I've, I've done that. My wife and my children all understand my years. I'm one of the founding members of 100 Black Men of Atlanta and one of the founding members of the 100 of America as a member of the Atlanta chapter. But it's all about your commitment to people. Money up to pay for bills, but I'm not a, I'm not wedded to money. Uh, I'm not. And I've given away almost one third, my wife and I have everything we earned. Because if it wasn't for the people who went before and sacrificed, Dr. King died but poor man in terms of financing, but a rich man for what he had done for our people. And so that's what you have to understand is if you're ready to go in, you'll make money, but you gotta also understand you're going in for justice for people to make sure opportunities are there. And that's how we make a difference. And so with that, if you're committed to your people, to your community, then being an attorney, we all have a responsibility, we all have a role we can play. You have to decide where you're gonna cast your lot to make a difference for our people. So with that, we need you. Uh, uh, we want you to make a difference, but at the end of the day, you gotta say thank you for those who paved the way for you. Most people don't know here that W.E.B. Du Bois did all of his work as a professor at Clark Atlanta University. James Weldon Johnson wrote, looked every boy as a faculty member here at Clark Atlanta University. And as great as these institutions are, Morehouse and Spelman started in the basement of Atlanta University. But we're all in this working together. So we need you in any way you can make a difference, make that difference. And I've sacrificed a lot for my family, but they understood I was doing, making a difference. And that's why we all have to understand we have a role to play no matter where we are. So I look forward to seeing the great things from you. So, so with that, yeah, um, yeah, I'll line up here. Um, the 100 black men of the various chapters have come across the state and want to thank you the National Coalition on Black Civic Participation, which started my, um, the institute here, the Thomas W. George Jr. Institute for Social Justice, for Civic Engagement, and for Economic Empowerment. And I have board members in the audience from NCBCP. Please stand, come on up for the photos. And, but with that, and the National Black College Alumni Hall of Fame and CAU for hosting us here, this is just one of the series from the Institute and all of the supporting organizations. So, so with that, we want to thank you. Um, will the board members come up getting a photo op here? And um, Rafik, if you'll take us home. Calvin Smyrick, come on up here and get in this photo op. Um, Honorable Calvin Smyrick. And the National Black MBA Association, I served nine years on that board. It's holding its annual conference here in Atlanta, September 27th through October the 1st. Please stop, there's a table out if you want to sign up to be a volunteer for this awesome uh, organization. And again, see uh, Louisa Butler Ward outside. And let me tell you, the coalition is a, uh, the um, Black MBA is another great organization here that makes a difference. So with that, Rafiq, we're gonna take this photo. And I want to thank you all um, for your patience. Thank you all for coming out. Um, a lot of the students were asking great questions about how they could volunteer. Well, Mr. George just told you um, a great opportunity to volunteer with the National um, Black uh, NBA Association. So hopefully that'll be your first stop when you go out here and sign up and tell your friends about it as well. And so um, once again, we want to thank you all for coming out and supporting this effort. Uh, we want to thank uh, Ben Crump um, for, uh, for coming out um, and actually uh, showing us um, this film and talking to us about it. And uh, thank you um, for supporting 100 and Clark Atlanta. You guys have a good evening.
Everybody be safe on be your safe, way home. Safe travels, everybody. Safe travels, everybody. <laughs> Tommy George, thank you. for him tonight just yeah yeah thank you very much yeah